At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programs offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Public courses are delivered in London, New York and Singapore. Our teachers are leading experts in their fields with a wealth of practical knowledge. They are skilled communicators who can get the message across quickly and effectively. Dr. David Cox has an international reputation as a teacher in the financial markets. His wide practical experience includes front office roles at Bank of America, London Business School and over 10 years of teaching at Goldman Sachs with LFS. He founded London Financial Studies in 1997 and specializes in inflation, quantitative techniques, risk management and derivatives. Capital markets have paid attention to inflation in various places over actually many years. Um, in the United Kingdom, we've had an index-linked bond market since 1981. Other countries have issued index-linked bonds more recently, for example, France in 98 uh, and uh, the US in 97. Um, the market for index-linked products has grown enormously um, in the 2000s where the derivatives market started up and since about 2003 we've had a very active derivatives market in a range of products, um, swaps being the most liquid um, and more recently since about 2007 we've had inflation options which are traded um, fairly liquidly as well now. Inflation has become uh, of great, a great deal of interest uh, recently in the markets uh, because, of course, we have two um, factors which are very much in operating in opposing directions. Um, if you think about the credit crunch, um, that's, of course, a, an immensely deflationary event in the markets. And in response to that, governments have um, an ultra-loose monetary policy. Interest rates have come down to practically zero in, in an awful lot of economies. And we have um, uh, negative interest rates in some places, and we have um, quantitative easing. The consequence of that, of course, is that you have um, a potential for deflation from the initial driving force of the credit crunch and a potential for a lot of inflation from the policies that have been put in place to counter the impact of the credit crunch. Um, the question is, you know, which one of those two forces is going to be in the ascendant? And that's where our index-linked bonds and perhaps more importantly our derivatives come into play, um, giving fund managers, banks, um, pension funds um, the ability to um, remove the risk. Inflation is uh, determined by the overall activity in any given economy. Um, it's not something that just um, is subject to the fluctuations of the market supply and demand. So when you're trading an inflation-linked product as opposed to an interest rate product, then you're trading something with reference to an economic variable, uh, which is not affected by the actual process of, of trading that rate. So inflation is a little bit different in that respect to other um, assets, if you like. The use of inflation products, be they bonds or derivatives, is of course to transfer risk from one party, the, the group that's long inflation, for example, uh, for example a government can issue index linked bonds allowing the people who are very short inflation, the people who suffer from inflation, to buy those bonds and thereby hedge their inflation risk. Um, derivatives, of course, provide a much wider range of techniques and solutions to different parties' inflation exposures. One other example of the use of inflation derivatives uh, in the recent past has been by hedge funds who have been able to um, buy index-linked bonds which historically have traded quite cheap in relation to the rest of the market, in relation to nominal bonds. And by buying an index-linked bond and doing an asset swap and then doing the reverse transaction with a nominal bond, uh, the hedge fund has actually been able to pick up quite a, um, a, a good return from that structure. Well, the starting point really is your inflation curve, and once you've got that, then you can use that to value and revalue a range of inflation derivatives. So we want to look at zero coupon inflation swaps, then we uh, build up a, an inflation curve based on the swaps market, and we can compare that with the inflation curve that we get from index-linked bonds and the difference between the two, which actually can be quite significant and it has been for, to, for some time in the United States, um, gives rise to possible strategies that we can put in place. 
in the interest rate world, we can easily derive a forward interest rate from uh, zero coupon rates. In the inflation world, that's not quite so easy because, of course, inflation is only known at the end of a given time period. It's not known about at the beginning of that time period, uh, which means when you try and derive forward inflation from zero coupon inflation, we have to introduce a, an adjustment, which is derived from the volatility of inflation and actually also the volatility of interest rates. So if we're looking at derivatives, we tend to build an inflation curve which is derived from derivative products, um, taking into account seasonality. We can then use that to revalue and manage the risk of our existing positions. And when we want to think about options on inflation, then of course we need to look at our basic inflation curve and think about the impact of volatility in inflation on the price of inflation options. Um, and there are a number of different styles or varieties of inflation option that are starting to become more and more liquid in the market. The LFS Inflation Course shows you how to use derivatives and index-linked bonds to hedge, trade and manage risk in today's market. Exercises and spreadsheets help you apply what you have learnt as your career progresses. Well, in the LFS programme, we look at a range of things. We start off by building up an inflation curve from index-linked bonds. So we take index-linked bonds and we produce uh, an inflation curve where we have um, zero coupon inflation, which is inflation from a particular point in time to a specific point in time in the future, rather than some sort of measure of break-even inflation involving yields. Uh, this, of course, is a much more precise measure of inflation that's traded in the markets and, and is an essential part, really, of using, doing anything either in index-linked bonds or with inflation derivatives. Um, we then go on to have a look at the swaps market and, of course, consider one of the big features of um, the inflation market, which we don't have in the market for um, interest rate products, which is a seasonality in inflation. The issue with any program, which is quite technical and quite in-depth, and uh, which involves a lot of sort of nuts and bolts of how to do it uh, type of um, information, is actually making the transition between the classroom and what goes on in the office. And one of the things we do is have a look at um, index-linked bonds on asset swaps. So you can uh, take an index-linked bond and you can compare it with a nominal bond in terms of uh, an asset swap. So you can transform both bonds into a nominal floating rate note and you can compare the spread over or under LIBOR um, that stems from doing an asset swap. Now, of course, in order to do that, you've actually got to look at the cash flows and you've got to work out what the asset swap levels are. And we, of course, do that in one of the exercises. Um, then you've got to think a little bit about some of the sort of practicalities around doing an asset swap. Uh, in other words, um, the, um, the credit risk that you take by asset swapping a high coupon bond versus a low coupon bond. I mean, that, that sort of aspect, it, which isn't easy to capture in a spreadsheet, has to be thought about as well. We have a wide range of pension fund managers, we have uh, inflation traders, we have middle office people who are um, in the process of um, analysing the models being used for um, managing inflation risk. We've had a lot of um, interest from central banks and government, uh, government uh, bodies, a range of people from uh, a number of different sorts of institutions, um, local banks, um, uh, banks in other parts of Southeast Asia and also um, fund managers as well based in that region.